Hi, I'm Teresa with Inflectra. I'll be providing a series of short videos to help you get started using Spira. In today's video, we'll be talking about risk management, a feature that's available in Spira Plan. So let's get started. The Spira Plan Edition comes with a fully incorporated risk module. When defining a risk, Spira Plan asks you to provide customized names and weighting for both probability and impact. Spira Plan then calculates an exposure score by multiplying the probability and impact scores. In order to reduce this exposure, you can treat the risk by defining mitigations and then outline specific tasks to carry out those mitigations. Once your tasks and mitigations are carried out, then you can reevaluate the impact and probability and lower the exposure score or perhaps even close the risk. Using the built-in Spire Plan history tracking feature, risks also include a full audit trail of any changes made, and electronic signatures can be utilized for risk status transitions to support those customers that need to maintain a validated system. Spire Plan lets you link risks with other artifacts in the system. For example, you have a new feature that you plan on implementing and you need a way to capture and track all the risks associated with it. Alternatively, you may want to associate a risk with a test case that will be used to test the likelihood of a risk occurring. Spira also provides visibility to product risks via dashboards and reports. Let's take a closer look at risks in Spira. Okay, here we are in Spira Plan, and the risk module can be found in the artifact tracking module here. And once you select risks from this drop down, uh, the risk list page opens. Like other list pages in Spira, you can show and hide different columns, including any uh, custom properties that you've added. Here you can see that there is a custom property for servers that is open on our, our list page. You can also do typical sort and uh, uh, filters. Right now um, we're filtering by highest exposure. Perhaps we wanted to filter that by, um, by owner instead, sort by owner or we could filter it for uh, uh, risks that are owned by Fred. In order to create a new risk, you would uh, simply click on this uh, new risk button here at the top and that would open up a risk details page and let you begin entering information. You can also see in the list page, we have columns for the probability and impact. And then this exposure score is the one that Spira is calculating from those weighted uh, values that uh, you provide uh, for the system. So before we go into a risk detail page, let's take a look at how you can customize the different risk values. And to do that, we're gonna go into our admin menu for Templum administration and into the risks area. And I'm just gonna open up these customizations in new tabs so they can quickly take a look at um, the options for customization. So here you can see you can edit the risk prob probability list as well as the uh, weighted scores um, and colors as well. So uh, here our default values are, are probabilities one through five um, and then our risk impacts, we have four particular impacts um, but those ter that terminology might not match your business. Um, you can take a look at uh, another option that we have here um, where we only have high, medium, and low. So all of this is completely customizable um, to make sense with the terminology that your business is currently using. In addition to uh, probability and impact uh, weighting and names, you can also uh, edit risk types. So this is a, just a different way to categorize risks. You can see we have some uh, default values, business, financial, schedule, technical, um, but those are all customizable as well. And then finally, the way that different industries handle risks, um, those uh, statuses and workflows are different across industries. So we give you the ability to change the name of those statuses so that it can meet your business needs. Um, and you do that in this status area, and then the, the workflows can be modified um, as you've seen us do different workflows uh, for different artifacts. Great, so now let's head back to our risk list page. And I'm gonna click on an item so we can take a look at the risk detail page. 
On our risk details page, you can see that we have information organized in that series of tabs like other artifacts in the system. We've tied this risk to a particular release and we've uh, filled in values for the probability and impact. We've also identified a review date. You can see that that's a required field and that's important because you do want to um, establish a review date uh, and come back and review the, the risk um, as its mitigations and tasks um, are being uh, carried out. So we can enter a description here. And then in the mit mitigations area, that's where you can add different mitigations with uh, different review dates uh, for that risk. Then if you click on the tasks tab, that's where you can define tasks that will carry out those mitigations. Those, can, those tasks, just like other tasks, have owners, um, they can be categorized as different types and given priorities, and they can be associated with um, requirements as well. There's an attachment tab for risk, so you can attach different documents um, or guidelines uh, that are pertinent to your business. As I mentioned before, risks can be associated with different artifacts. So for instance, if you wanted to associate a risk uh, with a particular requirement, you could do that here. You might wanna associate it with a test case that's going to be testing to see that if that risk occurs um, or a particular issue um, not being resolved might be a risk. And then finally, the history tab is checking all the changes that are made to the risks. So as, uh, as you adjust the probability and impact, due to your mitigations, that history, history tab will tell you um, that the reduction of that probability and impact. So you can see um, that audit trail. So not only on our detail and list pages do we have an, uh, a preview of uh, the exposure values, um, but we can also see those on our product uh, dashboards. So if I click on this dashboard, you can see we have a couple of different widgets um, this one is for risk summary. So we have a, a matrix and it is identifying the number of risks that falls uh, in those different uh, matrix categories. And in addition to that, we have a widget that is showing, highlighting the top open risks. So uh, perhaps for our system, we, you know, we're developing 30, 40 risks, um, but we only wanna look at those uh, that have those really high exposure rates. So here the top open risks will be displayed um, at the product dashboard level. So I hope this uh, explainer video has helped you understand how SpiraPlan uh, addresses risk management. There are other SpiraPlan videos out there, so please take a look at those. And thanks so much for watching.